Hi, I'm Larry Richardson, your step-by-step -step chef. In this episode, we're going to make a vegetable-rich dish. It is chicken, squash, and tomatoes Italian pasta dish. Now, it's going to look kind of complicated to make, but it really only involves a lot of chopping of vegetables. But when you're all done with it, you're going to find it very delicious. So come on, let's cook. So here are the basic ingredients we need for our chicken squash and tomato Italian pasta dish. First I have here that's one and a quarter pounds of boneless skinless chicken. So let's make that one to 1.5 pounds, whatever you can get your hands on. Then we have two yellow squash and one zucchini. And if you can only get zucchini or you can only get yellow squash, that's just fine. I just find that this makes kind of a color explosion, which is fun when you serve this dish. I have seven Campari tomatoes. I love the Camparis because they're very sweet, but you can also just use one large red tomato and that'll be fine. I'm going to use a quarter cup of this orange pepper. I like the orange, the red, or the yellow pepper. The green is a little bit too, um, actually a little bit too spicy for me. But if all you can get your hands on is a bell pepper and you really like that taste, you can certainly use the green pepper. Um, I am, we're going to use about a quarter cup of this chopped. I have one red onion and we're going to mince that and use about a quarter of a cup. I have two green onions and we're just going to chop those up. If you can't get your hands on the green onions, don't worry about it. You don't have to add that. And if you can't get your hands on a red onion, then you can certainly use sweet or yellow onion. The sweet preferably because it really does add a nice, a nice flavor to this dish. Then we have our head of garlic. I'm going to use anywhere from half of that to, um, to three quarters. It depends on how much garlic you like. I like a lot of garlic. And we're going to either crush, if you have a crusher, we're going to crush these cloves or you're going to mince them. We're also going to add a teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, a teaspoon of dried Italian herb seasoning, and then we have some optional red pepper flakes. If you want a little bit of a hot accent, you can add you know, anywhere up to a half teaspoon to a teaspoon of those as you're cooking, or you can actually just put those on the table and let people add them to their own taste. So that's what we're doing with the basic recipe, and I'm serving this on bow ties, which I think is a, just an excellent pasta because it's easy to pick up these other ingredients as you're eating if you're having it with the bow ties. Rotini is also great. So just try to find one of the pastas that makes it easy to um, pick up these ingredients and get a nice mixture in every bite. So let me show you how to put this together. Okay, the first thing we're going to do and we're just going to put these items right into this bowl, is chop our squash. Now all of the vegetables have been rinsed, so they're all cleaned up and ready to go. And then what I want to do is just take this, and I'm, I'm working around a, um, a tripod, so it's a little bit difficult, but we're just going to cut this so that it's in quarters. And I'll show you that again. And then I want kind of robust pieces. So make these about a quarter to a half an inch thick. And you can see it's quartering this very nicely. You don't want really thin pieces. You want this to be a, a heartier dish. And I don't want the squash to just fall apart. Okay, and then I'm just going to put these right into this bowl. And here's our zucchini. And I do have one more yellow squash that I'm going to chop in a moment. But I will probably do that off camera because I don't want to bore you. So again, we're just cutting it lengthwise and then lengthwise. So this gives us our quarters. And then just going like this. And this will be able to stand up to the other ingredients. So these are the hearty vegetables that I'm putting into this bowl right now. 
they take just a little bit longer to cook than the um, tomatoes and the green onion. So we'll separate them into two different bowls. I'll show you. There's our zucchini, all quartered up. And here's our orange pepper. And again, I, I just want about a, um, about a quarter cup of this chopped. Adds a nice sweet flavor to the dish. And we don't have to go too fine on it. If it's too fine, the little pieces will get lost in the dish. And there we go. Nice little flavor accent. And you can add more of any of these ingredients that you want. I'm trying to balance it out to my taste. And here's our red onion. And it's going to have kind of a moderate mince to it. Now these red onions can be kind of funky inside, so I can see this one is um, a little bit worn out at the top. It's a little tough too. So I'm going to set this slice aside. You can see that it has some kind of like a little bit of bruising in it. So just keep an eye out for that. And I'm going to chop that off completely. You just, you just don't know. It's like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get until you cut into it. So I won't, I won't waste that part that I took off, but I really have to give it an extra chop and to turn it into something useful. So I'm just looking for a light chop on this. Give me a nice quarter cup of um, minced onion. So I cut this, I cut this lengthwise this way, and then I'm just going perpendicular. And this chops quite easily. And then I'm just going down the face and I'll show you what it looks like. Let me just give this a little bit of an extra chop. Okay, so you can see this is a really rough chop. It's not um, finely minced, um, but it's not these huge pieces either. That's a nice flavoring. So we'll call that We'll call this our hearty vegetable bowl. Now we're going to do the softer vegetables. And you're going to see why we're doing it this way in a moment. And for our softer vegetables, we have our green onion. And you might say, why add red and green onion? Well, they have two different properties. And the red onion can be sweet but spicy. And the green onion can add a very rich uh, well, quite frankly, greenish onion taste to the dish. So it's worth it if you can get both of them. If you can't, you know, like I said before, the sweet onion, uh, yellow onion, white onion is fine. I mean, don't, don't worry about these little points as you're going through these recipes. Don't worry about that with any of the step-by-step -step recipes because I've traveled the entire country um, on camping trips in the summer and I can see that in some areas you have access to a full range of vegetables and in some areas you don't. So what do you do? You work around it. There's no reason not to eat healthy food. And another thing is you try to work around whatever's in season in your area. And um, you know most of the country you can get this stuff now all year round but wherever you can't and occasionally I can't hear either, you improvise. So we just slice this kind of into one eighth inch thick pieces. And when you slice this, you'll notice the difference in aroma. That's also the difference in flavor. And now we have our Campari tomatoes. And we're just going to cut off the stemmy part and then just go in and slice it. So I sliced it in half 
and then I'm turning this into thirds. And we don't have to clean the seeds out like we do on some recipes because this actually adds some flavor to the entire dish. So I'll just repeat this for all of the Campari tomatoes. The top is off and now I'm just cutting it into thirds. And I'll be back in a moment. So there are all the Campari tomatoes chopped up. Now we're going to work with our garlic. And you know to take this paper off of each clove. If you're going to mince it, you absolutely have to do that. Don't let any of this paper get into the dish. So I'm going to use about three quarters of this garlic. If you have a crusher, crush it up. If you don't, just finely mince it. I have this crusher that takes the papers right off. And I'm just putting it right in with the um, tomatoes. And with these, sometimes the, the garlic comes up the side like this, so just pick it off when it does that. Oops, <laughs> picked up a little extra paper. And I'm just going to do that with the remainder of this garlic. Just put it right on top here, and I'll be right back. And there's our tomatoes, green onion, and garlic minced on top. I'm setting this aside. I just got the chicken out of the refrigerator, and we're just going to chop this into cubes. And if you have any pieces that have um, bone in them, or um, too much fat, or gristle, um, chop that out. Nobody wants to eat that. A spoonful of that or a forkful of that with, um, with your bow ties will not be pleasant. So I'm just going down, slicing, slicing the chicken breast. And then I'm just going to chop this into cubes. There we go. Those pieces are perfect. So just to show you a little bit more graphically, there we go. That's about the size you want. So here we are over at the stove and we're going to start cooking. Now I already started the hot water to um, cook the bow ties. They take about 10 minutes so I'll throw those in as we get near to the finish time for all these other ingredients. So this pan has been heating just over medium heat for about three minutes. It's preheated and I'm just going to add one tablespoon of olive oil And then we're going to put the chicken in there. And I'm going to cook the chicken separate of the vegetables. And the reason I do this is I want to make sure that the chicken is cooked all the way through. So you really want to get this chicken browned up. And the other thing I'm going to do with the chicken is add our teaspoon of salt. Just a teaspoon of salt, and I'm going to add our teaspoon of Italian herbs. And the reason I do this is I want the chicken to have a distinct flavor. But don't overdo the um, dried herbs, the dry seasoning. You can taste this dish toward the end and decide if it needs more, but these dried herbs tend to be very potent. So I try not to overdo it initially. So you can see the chicken is browning up quite nicely. And I'll just give it an occasional stir. Just make sure that when you're all done cooking the chicken that you don't see any pink. And that's okay because we are still going to cook the vegetables with this. We're going to move the chicken over when we're doing that. But I just really want to make sure that this is cooked all the way through. That's part of our um, safe food handling. Now you can see this is about five minutes after we put the chicken in. It's cooking quite nicely. I don't see any pink in the chicken, so I know it's cooking. And what you might want to do is, is take a piece and kind of chop it in half with your spatula. Like I don't even see pink in the chicken when I do that. 
So I'm ready to move the chicken aside. I still want it to cook a little bit more. And then what I want to do is just pour in our vegetables. And these vegetables will cook down. And there's a nice melding of the vegetables, the chicken, and the chicken juice that you could see in the pan before. But at this point I'm also going to add our two other tablespoons of olive oil. And you might want to add a little bit more. The reason I'm kind of conservative with this is the olive oil can make the dish a little bit greasy as it cooks down. So I try to be careful about the amount of oil I add. And what we're looking for here is for the squash to just start to appear slightly translucent, slightly clear on the surface. And then we know that this dish is on its way. And then we can add our tomatoes and green onion and garlic. So you can see I'm stirring the chicken in with the veggies. And let's just let that cook down. And seven minutes later, the squash pieces are just starting to turn translucent. They're getting a little bit clear. So now I'm going to add our tomatoes, green onion, and garlic. And this gives it a nice flavor explosion. Now, the reason I don't salt these dishes a lot is I'd rather let people choose how much salt they want themselves. Um, often when I'm eating out, the food is just too salty. I can't taste the individual ingredients. I'm trusting everyone over five years old to salt their food to taste. So I do think you will need to add some salt, but do it at the table. Do it after you taste the dish and then decide how much salt you want. So what I'm going to do here is just cook it for about three more minutes and then we can take this off the stove and our bow ties will be ready and this is ready to serve. Okay, so three minutes later, you can see the tomatoes have cooked nicely. The green onion also has cooked nicely. The squash will still have a little bit of a crispness to it, but it's not raw. You do not want raw squash in this dish. The chicken's all cooked through. This is ready to serve. So congratulations, look at what you just did. You just made this delicious chicken, squash, and tomatoes Italian pasta dish. And wasn't it easy? This is delicious, it's nutritious, it's loaded with vegetables. You have good proteins, not a lot of fat. It's just, just absolutely delicious. I think you're going to like this. Now, if you do like this recipe, you can go to stepbystepchef.com, my website, and you're going to find a printable version of this recipe along with dozens and dozens of recipes and free video links for step-by-step -step dishes. So I really think you'll like this. Please give it a try. My name is Larry Richardson. I am your step-by-step -step chef, and I'll see you in the next episode.